shit, there's a Charizard in my backyard. You know Master Action's you. What's up, YouTube? It's Oblivion Duels X, and today you might be wondering why do I have these cards out like this? And today we're going to be ta uh, uh, talking about how I feel Necro should be hit. Um, and uh, I would like to thank Ubel Mastery for letting me you do this guest upload. Um, Daniel's pretty cool. Like, yeah. Um, he's the ninja. Okay. Uh, and people are wondering why didn't they just hit Brio to one like from the jump? The reason is Brio is this. If you don't know what I mean by this, uh, when Dark Arm Dragon was first released, it was two hundred and fifty dollars um, for Teledad. Teledad and Return Dad. If you don't know what those are, there are two decks that were really dominant in their formats, and no deck could beat them. Tier Zero. Um, and then that was uh, one reason. And the I have few correct ways to hit uh, hit the deck. And um, let's get to it. Uh, put this away. Uh, first is Valk. Now we're gonna use Abyss Fear as Valk. We're gonna use these because they both save you. Like these both save you like games like. A lot of the times when I'd put Valk to one because a lot of the times you lose is when they like a, you know, when you attack them and you think you're going for game because you will always overextend. You always forget about Valk. Like I don't think there's a time where I've n n not uh, I played Necros and I've not forgotten because I played Necros. I sold the deck is really boring. I don't know why people like that shit, but like um, Valk is like is your your one of your win conditions to be honest like Valk wins you most of your games and then the next hit would be Brio has to be banned like and you're wondering why I'm calling this Brio uh, Brio is it's like Brio searches searches if you don't know what I mean I mean Brio say I'm Brio for, and we're going to use this as Colossless. And then Colossless search a spell. It's that simple. Like, Brio shouldn't be at two. It shouldn't be at one either. Like, Konami literally made the perfect deck. Like, and the deck is literally very hard to hit. Like, um, in perspective of the game, say you're, uh, you, you're going for a game, game. Of course, they're going to, like, Valky, and then you like pass, and then they're like, okay, Brio, search Colossus, search your spell, freaking, say they trish you, you pretty much most likely aren't going to, like, you, most people can't win off of a trish, and then, here's the card that I'm going to get more in depth with, that they should hit, uh, I mean, We'll call a random card, and we'll call something else Dijin, like Dijin. There should be no reason I have to run so many outs in my deck just for Dijin. Uh, Dijin to be, uh, like Dijin Band. Uh, salvage is what I'm going to use. Preparation of Rights. Like, you should never have an easy plus two that can be used any time in the game. Sometimes it's a one for one, sometimes it's a plus two. But, like... It's like when the car was at three, like I played Necros, um, I beat the deck, but it doesn't matter. Um, I, it, it, this deck, I'm not gonna lie, Mermaids are sometimes just unfair. You just open godly hands, but let's not talk about Mermaids. Uh, so prep, you basically, uh, it wins you games. Uh, if you didn't know, there was a YCS in, uh, in UK, where someone attacked, um, didn't attack someone, his opponent top deck, uh, prep, and he like put his head to like on the table. He was like, uh, like, it was pretty funny. Like, this card went, so this is my plus two in the deck. I mean, salvage so can get two, but like, 
Prep is even more broken because you get to ritual spell and a monster. Say you want to trish someone and you have a Sharit in hand. You can do that. It sh you should it should never be that easy, but you can. Like this deck has so many things it can you can hit from the deck. Like the deck is so, like oh yeah, and then the deck that the card that should be hit to one is the one the monster you summon the most and we're going to use this this is going to represent unicorn unicorn should be at one i would ban the card but like i'm not going to be butthurt unicorn creates too many broken play like Overlay and, and Laval Wall Chain Detach Dijin Lock. The Unicorn opens up Dijin Locks. Unicorn opens up freaking like stopping like Unicorn even stops the tellers. Like it hurts the tellers a little bit. Like it's, you just have to learn how to play around it. Like it's really hard. Like so you summon Unicorn. Something you like, it's really broken. Like, you should never be able to plus. Like, you should, this deck doesn't even plus, it's all like one for ones and whatnot, except for Trish. Trish is just unfair. The only plus in the deck, really, like, if you're talking about real pluses, would have to be Cherie, the Herald of Arc Light, and Prep. But, like, you can't really, you just have to hit Unicorn and then. If we want to kill the deck, say the deck does win worlds, like Daniel said on his other video, thanks Daniel for giving me some ideas. Like Daniel said, if you really do want to hit, kill the deck, like say it wins worlds and you want to kill it, put all the spells to one. That easy. But you still got to ban Brio, like the deck can't, the deck can survive with one Brio if you want to pay attention to the OCG, the deck can't survive with zero brios like the deck will literally die and you're probably wondering like how do you go from one to zero and like and it doesn't die like it's pretty self-explanatory like this deck i'm close to calling it tier zero i'm close to calling it teledad level like i played teledad and it's like yeah, yeah, but Necros is it's not it's not like it's a deck that it has has no good matchup or like it has a good matchups like it beats shit all is but like it's one of those decks that like it depends because the deck can brick it's like spell books it searches a lot so if the deck bricks you pretty much lose I had someone like. They were really mad at me at a regionals because they drew like all freaking ritual monsters. It's like if you draw this hand in Mermails. Like there's plays, but like it's unplayable. It's like if you draw, if I drew this hand, I'd probably just scoop. This hand. He basically opened up this hand. And yeah, that's unplayable game state, <laughs> and you can't really do anything with that. Like, that's freaking losing. But uh, I like to thank you guys, guys for listening. Um, uh, if you didn't get what I was saying, I said ban Brio, ban um, a preparation of rights, limit Unicorn, limit all of the spells if you're trying to kill the deck. Like this deck. Um, you you guys are probably saying, oh, you're all wild and you're going all over the place because of how the deck runs. Like I'm saying, like how how I'm trying to hit the deck is because this Konami literally made the perfect deck. Like I never thought this day would come. Like, but I'm not gonna play that shit's boring. But like, they literally made a perfect deck on pen and paper. Like this is literally the best ritual deck. Except for Gishki FTK, that's actually probably the best ritual deck. But I like to thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support. Guys are so beautiful. Subscribe to my channel. You bell, not you bell. What the heck? I do. Uh, I will probably try to do a, a DN deck profile of you bell. If you it's for you, you bell fanatics. Because if you didn't know, I played you bell back in the day, Daniel. Uh, 
he was my mentor. I thank Daniel a lot. And um, thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for all the support. If you subscribe, um, if, I, if I get 10 likes, I will literally shoot. What will I do? I will pour buckets, like three or four buckets of water on my head. Say I want to. I'm dead serious, and that's a promise. <laughs> All right. Oh, gosh. Ugh. Selfie stick. All right. Yeah. I'll pour buckets on my hair. And I won't even... Guess what? I won't even comb my hair. I'll look nappy for you guys. Peace, YouTube.